how fascinating that today on Valentine's Day, I come to the realization that rolling is really largely a, a heart centered practice. It's the modern human's ability to understand how to manipulate this sternal curl or the, the sternum as a as Bertos would talk about, B-E-R-T-H-O-Z, I believe is the name of this theorist, um, the, the sternum as a perceived center of rotation, um, kind of like a wheel that we can manipulate in the body. If we look at uh, the theory of uh, the Dantian, the, the sort of traditional Chinese medicine, like the, the Chinese energetic centers, the primary Dantian being around the basically the second chakra, the, the sacrum, the sacral chakra, what I think of as the primary keystone, then we go up to that secondary dantian as heart center, tertiary dantian as the third eye. This idea that when we roll, what I found to be the most useful cue is that the monkey looks, the monkey sees where it perceives its space but that first movement of the hoop is really where the heart or intention biomechanically that sternum that thorax it starts to move it initiates that weight shift that is then manifest through the rest of the system through the place of greatest force transmission like the thoracolumbar fascia the pelvis uh, through the use of the greatest the largest lever in the body it's kind of incredible to me that that spiral is really made physically manifest through that intention at heart center. That's our first cascade into spiral, into Fibonacci. So to bring that back to the nuts and bolts of how does this inform my rolling? How does this deepen my rolling as my practice of my massage therapy, my chiropractic, my physical therapy, and ultimately my, my core conditioning in a centripetal fashion, a centripetal conditioning. So nuts and bolts. To roll the cue that I found to be the most helpful for myself and all of my clients I have the hoop swings over to the side. Per the mashing drills, the goal is to, to soften the glutes as we start to weight bear in them, to scoop in on the pelvic floor a little bit instead. And the most useful cue I've found to be that when I start to swing over to the side, I'm curling my sternum in order to leave my leg behind me as long as possible, as the hand glides to lower me, I curl my sternum even deeper to leave that leg behind me as long as possible until it has to come up and over ball of foot, ball of foot. What that ends up causing is it necessitates the, the mashing of the shoulder girdle. Instead of focusing on just that mashing of that armpit line to release the, the whole shoulder girdle to ultimately release the sternum, the use of that sternal curl, if I just curl deeper, curl deeper, it allows me to leave that leg behind me as long as possible, I come up and over, and then as I come from back body to the front body, I tuck the tail, curl the sternum to repair. As I float the heel, I curl deeper in the sternum to be able to drop that heel to the ground easily as opposed to using the leg as a counterweight to pull me over which kind of uh, it it doesn't allow you to fully access that psoas line that passive rolling away from the femur as far as we possibly can to really activate wake up this psoas line which I believe is through that process of rolling how babies tone the psoas, sort of wake it up neuromuscularly to be able to activate it, to be able to use it functionally in locomotion, to be able to then go from that rolling state to supine, to quadruped, to seated, to kneeling, to standing. So 
I think it's just kind of an amazing Valentine's Day meditation that really where we can see and perceive our space, that first, that first gesture that brings us into this Fibonacci cascade, this spiral that can both heal and condition the body be really initiated at the heart center with that swing of the hoop.